So um, I'm just so happy to introduce Julia. I just had a wonderful 30 minute conversation with her. Uh, Janice and I did uh, while we were waiting for you guys or while I was, uh, I got to come on early and talk with her. Um, and so I've learned some really neat things. I've also looked, scoured her website and, and learned as much as I can about her. I'll let her tell most of the stories, but I just want to tell you that she is uh, uh, living in Berlin. Uh, she is a German photographer. She travels the world, not only for her personal projects, but for assignment work. So it's, um, you know, she's proud to say, I make a living as a photographer. Now, she also does things like she teaches for fun and she does all kinds of other things to keep, keep herself uh, uh, busy and, and, and helping other photographers. Um, she's a member of Up Photography or Up Photographers, which is a collective, uh, a street collective, a very prestigious one that has a, uh, four of our speakers from this week who are in it. Um, they tell me, uh, Eleanor, who is here today and who was one of our speakers yesterday, they say they do a lot of talking to each other. Julia told me uh, a half an hour ago that she and Eleanor talk more than she talks with her friends in Berlin. And so I think that's a wonderful thing to have this kind of collective where you, uh, you love your friends and you, and you get to share and inspire each other and, and, and ask for advice. So. Um, She's just got this project that she's been doing since 2001 that's to die for uh, on water and pools and well bodies of water, which you'll see soon. And her street shooting started a few years before that. So we'll see a little of all of that. So uh, without further ado, uh, Julie is here and so is her mom. I can't wait to meet her mom. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello, mom. We could switch on your... Um... The video maybe <laughs> maybe she's shy i don't know she was there she's there <laughs> so hi everybody thank you for joining my uh, talk and i'm very uh, glad that you invited me julia for this uh, exciting event uh, the festival in la which is really exciting and um yeah i think i i go directly to my uh, screen sharing right uh to see my pictures <laughs> and of course in combination to my um my speaking so uh, Julia, uh, she told already that um, I hope that I, I was yesterday already um, watching to Eleanor and David Gibson. Um, so I loved uh, a lot the talk. I hope you enjoyed it already yesterday. And um, I'm very curious about the upcoming events of the week. Uh, yeah, as Julia already mentioned, I'm since 2019, I am a member of uh, App Photographers. I just put on my watch also, sorry, because I'm afraid that I'm running over time. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm, uh, since 2019, I'm a member of the App Photographers, which for those who don't know it, it's a collective of street photographers around the world. And I mentioned that because for me, I'm uh, a quite communicative person and I love networking and I have networks here in Europe or Germany, but this was, um, even opening up my photographical horizon around, uh, out of Europe for me. That's uh, really precious uh, to get some input from my colleagues about um, photography from, other, uh, other, from around the world. So this, I'm very happy about that. And it's a very kind of family uh, feeling with them. So uh, when I started thinking what is, could be interesting for you, of course, I thought about the street photography. And I did it, um, I did a lot uh, in the, when I started photography. So maybe I go back a little bit to my beginnings. I, uh, I started photogra taking photographs in 91, more or less. I bought the first camera before I left my hometown in Bavaria. And then I left to study psychology first, a few semester before, but parallelly, I really, there was a kind of a fire for photography started to burn. And I was really going, uh, I was uh, photographing a lot and that got, be uh, became so strong, the wish to become a photographer or to take pictures that I applied for the art academy and I, I uh, entered. So I, I got through the exams and I entered. So from that moment on, I was really, uh, it was uh, starting a big passion to photograph. And, um, but in the beginning, of course, if you start taking photos, 
you start to take pictures of your friends or about structures on the wall or because you are shy to enter to go outside in the streets maybe everybody of know of you knows uh, the same that in the beginning you are you are about technique and yeah and then at that time i was already in my studies but i also had a photo group beside and we were pretty much into reportage and documentary photography and street photography so with them i started to have the feeling okay let's explore the streets and let's go out because the streets are kind of stage and so this image for me from 98 marks a little bit the beginning point for me to go out and to take pictures of people I don't know in the public space. And here already you will, you will see a little bit what's going on also later in my photography. I, I'm always in between narration and abstraction or form. So you will see that. And I think in that image, it's in the station of Bremen. Um, it's already very much into it to go to the edges and to try to uh, make a good composition. So I spent, of course, hours then going out and to, to go to places where people are and to, um, to observe what's going on. And I would say in general, I'm quite curious person and I'm not so afraid of approaching people. So um, I, I went out a lot. And, uh, but here you see so the, the image before shows more the narrative aspect and uh, the kind of uh, telling storytelling image. And here you see, it's also a picture from 2000. Um, uh, it's another way of taking photos, what I like. It's here, it's a, it's a queue, waiting queue. It's a, just a random waiting queue. But for me, the, in, the image, gets a little bit emblematic or iconic because it's kind of a question mark. So you will, you will see somehow I have, I don't know why in my head, I think my brain needs structure from outside sometimes. So I am pretty much attract, attracted by forms. So, and that's also why I choose uh, black and white because that helps to, to uh, bring the form out and to make an image generalized and more timeless. So I like images really much when they start to get different layers like this one, like it's just a waiting queue, but on the other hand, it can be a question mark about where is our mankind heading to? So um, that's, and also that was printed in that uh, context in uh, newspapers. And yeah, photography in the end for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a game, I think, and it's very playful. So this image shows also, I loved, I love to experiment within the borders of the medium. So I'm not, uh, so I do candid images. I don't, um, I'm not interested in, in, in changing them in Photoshop or at least only in the black and white, but uh, I'm not, um, for me, that's important that I took the image like this and I didn't uh, uh, work on it later in Photoshop. That's still not my, my approach. So here it's very easy that with, I went very close to a wall to make pretend that it uh, so and then it gives you a little bit like the aha effect that you didn't know in the beginning of what's going on and I I like that to disturb and maybe to 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 let you watch a second time or to, to stay longer and thinking what's going on so uh, I had the luck that at that time during my studies I started to work for press photography and I was studying for um, working for a newspaper called Taz, die Tageszeitung, which is a left newspaper in Germany. And I had, yeah. I had the opportunity to, uh, um, to work for them and beside my studies to, to, to earn money also. And this image, for example, um, I saw this guy when I, I crossed uh, the street and I saw him and I, but I didn't have my camera with me. So I cycled quickly home because I felt, okay, he will stay there for a while. And I came back and he still was working there. And I, I stood uh, beyond and I was waiting for the right moment when he was, the, the shadow was nice. So, but you, you all know maybe that um, uh, street photography has a lot to do with waiting and just uh, returning to points you like. What me helped a lot um, 
in this because uh, beside the studies are very very good for uh, exploring your own artistic um, approach and to to know what you do and to to be able to talk about photography and to think about it and uh, to edit it and the my job in the newspaper was a perfect combination to go in the practice beside so I and there I think I learned a lot to work quickly and not to think to overthink things because you have to do immediately uh, the image and then you have to at that time we had also to develop the roles of the films during the conference of the with the redactors and um, I really I learned there to decide just from the uh, to, to, to go through my negatives and to decide this is a good image and then to, to print it immediately and to scan it and, and to bring it out. So that was a, a very good school outside my university. And so I have a lot, a lot of images from that time. I, it was kind of experimenting field for me to go and to, but also to see it printed in the evening. This was a really a perfect time for me to, to learn how to to find my own a way of uh, seeing the world and to bring it into an image. So this is a picture I, I never showed before. I, I tried to integrate some images, for some new images and not the, just the pictures you know maybe from my website. So, but I, I, when I, I found this image, I felt like, oh yeah, it's a good image because uh, it's a, the adult world and the child's world and the world, the child is observing me and uh, the adult world is a mess and it's the first day of I think maybe this it's a sister child because um, it's the first day in school. So it was really for me a very intense time to to learn so much about photography and in the same time to practice and to print it out and to, to really to to show immediately your work to to an audience and to people outside. And we had a really nice group of photographers working for that newspaper. And we met a lot of times to, to talk about our images and if they were good or not. And so it was very intense. This image I integrated because um, photography is for me so important because it, make, it, it keeps you very open because things are turned sometimes out that they are not happening like, like expected. So I was here in a, in a village in Bavaria for taking a portrait for a magazine, but the guy didn't show up or he wasn't there. And then I was walking around in the village and I found this funeral. And so, uh, yeah, and that, that's the random thing. Um, uh, what I really love in photography that you learn to not to fix too much, much on one thing it's better to, to stay open because sometimes the better story is next to it or after or when you leave. And then the guy showed up, but in the end, they printed also this image. Yeah, I did a lot of cultural events. I also work for one um, orchestra for 20 years now. I didn't show the images now because I think it's, uh, it was too much. And of course, um, I pretty much love uh, that my single images work, but you also can talk about photography as part of a series. So I think street photography often is um, that we just watch single images and maybe in the total they give a whole story or in a book. But I sometimes I have the need to put together images to in a story or a context. So in that time I was also I went on a boat with uh, one woman um, ship, uh, how to say, instructor, no, not instructor, she, uh, engineer. And I, I went on the boat with them for 10 days uh, and did a little reportage on my own. So I just, I could just could go on the, on the boat. I didn't pay anything. And afterwards I offered it to the newspapers and I got it printed. And, but it, I did it also without knowing if I will have an, um, money for that. I just went because I, I had this passion or I still have, I, I don't want to talk in the past. I'm still working as a photographer for magazines, newspapers. Um, but uh, yeah, I love being on ships and on boats. So, and this was an unusual story about this woman because a uh, woman on board, still people think that, that that's bad luck. And 
Yeah, so there were two women then on the boat <laughs> with me, but they all survived. Um, yeah, and yeah, being on the, on the water, you will see, uh, for me, it's my favorite theme. Here just, I found some images uh, from my study times because I, I, I always had my camera with me and I still have a lot of times my camera with me. And of course the study colleagues, um, they are very good for taking photos. I love to take pictures of people and also people I know, but also people I don't know. So I brought you this image because of course, if you're a press photographer, I don't want to show that it's just heaven. You just also have to bring certain images like this. Um, but in total, I always found these uh, appointments to go, uh, this ritualized uh, appointments, I always found it very interesting that this is a kind of, uh, yeah, the image making, it's somehow a kind of ritual. So it can also be fun. And now when I look very long on this image, it's really funny. <laughs> it's not a street photography because it's, it's uh, staged. And I brought this image to show you that I also went through the whole um, story of photography development the last 30 years, because I started, as you saw it in the grainy images, you saw the film uh, base. And here that was one of my first uh, digital images because in the newspaper we had the fight that we had to use uh, a digital camera. We didn't like it, but we had to in the beginning. And this is really uh, one of the first images I took. And then you see it's somehow really flat. But on the other hand, I think it's interesting because you, if you go closer, you see it's really the, the information. It's so, um, it's so uh, bad, but it's, it shows also the history of photography, the beginning of digital era. So I have plenty of images which are really bad and concerning now, seeing what's got possible now, it's really crazy. And I, I totally uh, went into digital now. I still have my enlarger in my family, parents' house, uh, but I don't have any lab for the moment anymore. But um, yeah, I would say I, I arrived in the digital era now for maybe 15, 10 years. So I, I found these images when I went to my archive and I thought it could be funny to see me in action because for me, it's transporting at that, this energetic moment. For me, photography has to do with energy exchange because you give, because you open up the people and you talk to them and they give you back that you are, they allow you to take photos. So it's really a lot of giving and taking. And um, now getting older, I feel also that in the evening after a day taking photos, I feel sometimes exhausted because it's, yeah, I felt uh, I gave a lot of energy and there's a lot of energy going on, which uh, is, uh, it, it's, it's work, and, but nice work because you got back a lot. And here you see, I was in the full, um, I was full into it. And a, a colleague of mine, we were, went to an appointment for the, total sun eclipse uh, event and they gave people the sunglasses. So I, I had the idea to bring a step with me, a small leather, because I, uh, so that's why I'm taller than the others. So it was a good idea to bring it. <laughs> so yeah, you'll see that me in the, in the early times. Let's go to the water section. So I started, uh, I did my diploma work about the public bath. And um, yeah, at that time it was quite uh, usual that people went out to Siberia or whatever to take travel stories in color and medium format. So this, my series um, was quite unusual in that time. And, uh, but for me, it was important I, um, because diploma works are quite important point because you feel, ah, oh, I want to do a good, a good work because you have time for a few months and you want to do it good because maybe that can be a, a jumping board for later and so it, but it gives it gave me a lot of pressure so i felt okay i go back to what i really love and that's swimming and swimming pools so i went in the swimming pools 
I got the permissions from the press. I was convincing the press uh, marketing section of the pools in Bremen and Hamburg. So I had free entrance and I spent hours in the pools for this series. And um, I show you some of them. And you have to see myself being in a swimming suit, of course, because I didn't, uh, I, you cannot hide in pools. I was part of the, of the whole uh, scenery. And um, of course you have to, it's always a way how you deal with the people. And of course I was in the swimming pool suit and with my camera and look also very funny. So people, they, it, was, it was funny that they were like this. And so we were talking and then uh, after a while people start to maybe to um, forget me. And then I, I start shooting. But sometimes nothing is happening and I just went for a swim, which for me, um, it's totally fine. And this, yeah, I told you that for me, uh, photography is really a gift because it, it, it allows me to, to create a bridge to my outside world and to other people. It's a, it's a pretext to go to people. And sometimes you have days where you really feel grumpy or and then, oh. and then if you start for taking photos, it really helps you to wake up and to open up to the others. And that's, I really I like in photography. And of course, it's always in my photography, I love um, that you feel the power of photography like this one. You never can see the image like this because uh, frozen movements, you cannot see with your pure eye. And that's for me uh, one really, but because I, I, why I love photography and maybe not didn't uh, do film. But film also has different nice um, aspects which photography cannot co cover. But this kind of timelessness and to freeze the moment and to make something visible, what you cannot, cannot see, it's one very important point uh, for me why I choose, why I choose uh, like medium the photography. And swimming pools, I chose it also because it's very interesting. You have the, this kind of tension between public space, private place, People go there uh, for relaxation, but and you have the strong patterns of the architecture. On the other hand, you have the moving water and the body. And I think this kind of attention between the aspects uh, is very nice, uh, in interesting for me. And here that I chose this image to show that sometimes um, storytelling is better not to tell everything from A to Z. So I decided here not to show, and the framing is like the negative is. I, I didn't want to show the uh, pool and you know where it is, but somehow it's getting a kind of a metaphor for something else without the water. Okay, it ended up also in my diploma and also in a little book and uh, exhibitions and it was widely exhibited. And I won an award and I was under the 10th uh, Leica Oscar Barnack Award, um, the first 10, and I was like, wow. So that brought me out of Bremen and I moved uh, also to Berlin then. So my love for water and uh, swimming pools and bathing culture continued. And I was invited to Japan for an exhibition to show my public bath. And he said, come to Japan. And so I applied for a scholarship and an um, artist residency and I got it. So I went to Japan and I found uh, this. I knew that they are, have a deep bathing culture but I didn't, knew, didn't know that they have such a deep um, bathing culture. So I found the small place is called Sento. It's a more kind of a washing house. I don't know whoever has been to Japan, maybe you have seen it because it's quite popular and still at that time in Tokyo they had thousands of the centos and it's decreasing but it still um, exists and it's a place where people go to wash it comes from a time where people didn't have a wash uh, wash uh, place at home or a bathroom so you went you took your thing and you went to the neighborhood and also to meet people and it really, it's lovely places because it's somehow you can find relaxation and somehow you can find communication and really people love it to go there. And it's very, 
a spiritual place because people wash and wash and wash you have rules to wash yourself before you enter in the in the tubes and the, the purification of your body is the purification of the mind that's a very spiritual thing so i had um the opportunity to that one woman uh, came with me and she entered she helped me to enter the centers because i don't speak any japanese but i took very rare image not a lot really very rare and uh but with her help, I could um, do that. And this guy I knew, and he said, ah, you can come to the man's section if you want. So I went once to the man's section, which is uh, because centers are separated, sex separated. And it's very, I love the purity of the place. And especially in the hectic and really yeah, crowded times in Japan in, in the hectic uh, daily life, it's a place of, it's a kind of oasis and very smart. And sometimes people start doing karaoke in the changing room. And sometimes if you're changing and there's nobody, you can hear suddenly a voice from the men's section, an old man singing, and that was really touching. So it's, I can just recommend go to Santos if you're in Japan. And you will find it here with the sign. That's the, it's a very hidden place, but you can find it here with the sign of the hot water it means. They just hang out the curtain in the afternoon when they open up. And also this was ending in a book made by Pepperoni Books, Berlin. And I, I, I love to make books because it really it's challenging to, to, to work with your imagery, to edit, to integrate text or not, and really to make, but maybe you all of you know that, that bookmaking is exciting, but also challenging. <laughs> but it's, for me, this series has pretty much the aspect, which I like that it's a historical, that photography in, um, in the function of, of really make, writing history, it's important because um, centers are decreasing, the old centers, the traditional ones will disappear one day. So I, I um, participated in maybe to give them a kind of memorial one day. And Water Matters was the next book I did in 2013, but it's a still ongoing project. And um, so I just, I, I really like um, to have some kind of red line in my photography, which is for me the water that makes it somehow easier to, to um, focus because sometimes street photography for me is very much, you feel like you can do it everywhere, every time and whatever. And so sometimes it makes you a lot, uh, un, un, um, how to say, um, nervous. So, but to know that I have one red line around the world, picking photos in pools, at lakes, beaches, it's really uh, helpful to, to quiet down and to say, okay, today I will go once in a pool and then maybe I'm done or whatever. It's really um, relax, uh, relaxation to have a theme on your own. And this image, I just want to say a few words, is one of my um, also favorite images of myself. And I also proved it in different exhibitions. People uh, stand a while in front of it because I think also here you feel the power of photography, the, the holding of the time and also the, it's a kind of inversion in the image. The shadow is somehow the most important part. It, it's defining the body and the body itself, it, it's, uh, it's not really important. So the story is told by the shadow and also um, the point that you, you feel somehow the tension that the, the, the body will destroy the image itself half a second or a quarter of a second later. I think this is why it's, it's, it's so precious that you really feel that, that you, uh, you can hold the breath. So in this book, I integrated also pictures more also poetic around the theme of water and bathing, but also water in general. So this image for me also, I like it because you feel it's a kind of disturbing element, the trunk. People sometimes feel that it's a kind of a crack, uh, but on the other hand, it's then you start to have this aha moment that it's a trunk of a tree. 
but it's also photography that it may, brings all things on one dimension. You have, you don't have three dimension, and that's a strength uh, because it gets like uh, a, a kind of perturbation of our perception. And also, you have this kind of pattern. You have the pattern on the stones. You have the pattern on the surface of the water and the pattern on the wood, and all this together. And then the guy also has pattern. In his, uh, in his shirt, this together, I think that gives a kind of a universal feeling or yeah, the elements together. And also the guy is touching the trunk and at that point where he's touching, the trunk makes a little curve. And I think this little details for me makes an image like good image. And I try really to work hard on this to find out this special things and to make the image very good and not just to say, oh, it's a good one. It's a, it has to be a good, very good one. Okay, sometimes it's just about um, humor. Was it, uh, uh, just it, maybe I don't want to, to make it small. It's about humor and I love photography for that to sh show the absurdity or sometimes our humankind is very uh, funny. And here are the six pack variations of the guys. This is uh, the summer concert of the, the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. And also here, sometimes the, un the un unforeseen things are making a good image because it was a sudden summer rain, which people were surprised. It's an outside concert and it was like, and for me it looks very, very like a, a film scene. These guys maybe will know from other images. They are from Zetcheni Bath in Budapest. I, 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 they don't, I, of course, I, I, I had to go to Hungary. They have a very strong bathing culture in Hungary. Here in Balaton, these are uh, students from the first semester from Budapest and they went in, this, in the water to play for, to know each other for the first semester. And yeah, for me, I took this image now because it's so rare that we see images for the moment with a lot of people with crowds. So I showed this for here. And of course, it's about aesthetics always and again. But I always was avoiding not uh, to just uh, go with the form. That's boring. So just having a book with forms is boring. But if you have once some images which are aesthetic, I love it but I don't want to be form just for form. It has to be used in a very uh, sensitive way. Or I like to combine, co combine it with narrative like this. This guy, he was working so hard not to get old, I think, in Hungary as well. This image I took here in Berlin and we have a lot of lakes around uh, the city and uh, but it doesn't matter it also can be somewhere else I don't sometimes I don't write titles or names under it because I, I don't it's not about Berlin or whatever it's about bathing and childhood and here I chose um, this to show because uh, on the left knees on the right corner in the uh, right corner on the above because I was long time thinking if I have to crop the image because but then I realized that it's ex exactly because of the two legs on the right hand, it's important that they are there because if they are not there, it would have been too much like a harmonic image or symmetric. And I don't like symmetry. It's, it can be very static. So that's why I think the knees are very important. And that's also why I never liked the 6-6 six, six format. I have a roll flex and I had a period I was exp I was trying out 6-6 uh, six, six, um, but it was too harmonic and too st st uh, static. I didn't uh, get warm with it. This is the cover of the book. Of course, I had to go to Iceland uh, and it was in the end, it was a paradise. I also got uh, an um, artist in residency there I applied for it and got it. And I really can recommend to do uh, residencies to have really time for a project. 
And for me being a photographer too, I work on that. So I, I live on that. Sometimes it's hard to integrate the um, personal stories uh, to find time for it because sometimes you need a longer period to work on something to get into it. So I went to uh, Iceland and I found so many pools inside and outside and it was for me a paradise. And I realized that in Iceland and also these hot pots like here, this warm, just warm, they have so much thermal bath, uh, water, it's heaven, but you need it because it's really cold there. And I felt um, they don't have any cafes or something or bars outside of Reykjavik. Um, but the hot pots, that's a communication place. Sometimes the, 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 the how to say, the, the guy who is the guard, he comes and brings your coffee and people are coming in the hot pot after work to chat. And it's a very funny place. And I also, I also realized that people, um, uh, it was really nice to see in Iceland, people were so open. They were so proud to be part of a project of me because I was talking to them and said, I, I'm a photographer. And they were, it, they were very open to be taken in photos, which I really loved a lot because it's, of course, it's getting more and more difficult. And I'm very happy that I, I have most of my pictures done now because now in these times with all the iPhones, sometimes it's, com it's strictly forbidden to take photos anywhere, which makes it also difficult for us professionals. So Blue Lagoon. And here for last, it's in Lithuania, also an invitation for a festival and for one month of residency. And this, um, and this um, uh, yeah, I was invited in a small town called Druskininke, which is uh, the city of salt, which means that it's a place for healing with water. So people come there for medical reason. And this woman from Poland, she was really keen in taking in a picture. So she's doing some curo, curo therapy, like being in cold, for two minutes in two, 200 degrees zero or something. <laughs> and um, what I was mostly interested, and I just show you a few images, is in the mud bath. The mud bath is a kind of therapy where people soak in. It's a mixture between soil and water. And you feel, you just soak in and you feel like, oh my God, I get so much energy. I, 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 I did it so much time. <laughs> and then visually, I felt this kind of the bus tube when the, the, the black mud is running out, it gives so pretty uh, traces. So I did the combination between portraits and the traces and portraits also is one part of my photography I really love. I didn't show, don't, don't show today so much, but it's also in my professional life. I, I love taking portraits. And here I like especially the combinations. So this is the relaxation after the mud bath. And I felt after this one month, I felt also rejuvenated because um, I did so much mud bathing and uh, relaxation in these kind of funny chairs, uh, massage chairs. So I, it's <laughs> sometimes really good to combine the work and the nice things. <laughs> and maybe you saw this on Instagram. It's, yeah, this, just sometimes it's a, it's a, you like the shots. It's in last year in France. So I have one small section about what about color. I just didn't watch the time. No, it's fine. Uh, that I don't take so much photos in photo. Uh, in, in color doesn't mean that I don't like color. I like color, but it's for my reasons. I, I prefer, as I told you, um, black and white, but color, of course, sometimes it's needed. And here, this ginkgo tree in Japan, it's a color picture. And of course, uh, in my daily life, uh, the jobs are also mostly in, in color. But here, the orange has to be orange, I think, in the Venice Canal. This also, it would be weaker if you just turn out the colors because, uh, yeah. That's also in Lithuania, kind of manicure treatment. Uh, this color, this I like because of the pastel colors. 
it could work in black and white a lot of times, but sometimes there's a tendency to do it in color or black and white. And this one, I tried it out in black and white because I thought it's better, but then I felt it too static. And for me, the three colors like black, um, blue, orange, and green, they're the complementary colors. And this somehow makes it for me more complex then. It's an inundation. This one, it's unfortunately just done by, our, um, by an iPhone. But normally I have my camera with me when I go swimming, but that, that, that time I, I forgot it or whatever. It's in my hometown in Bavaria where I, I grew up to that river. And that's, I think, why I'm so attached to water because I grew up in a city with uh, three rivers. So I just go quickly through one series I did in my hometown now, Berlin. It's in my courtyard. And it's my daily view outside of the window in the bathroom. So I, I'm looking down and see what weather it will be and how to dress up then. And I, I love more and more the, um, the how to say, um, to do long-term projects uh, because then you, you see that the time is, is present. So you will see here some of the images and it's just a little backyard, which is not really interesting, but it's so full of life. And you can see the traces of the seasons and of the neighbors. And uh, that's, I'm still continuing. So I love to have, you know, this, these red lines in my, um, my series. And here's one uh, work I was invited and in. that was a big honor to be part of the 100 years of Leica photography exhibition which toured in, in the whole uh, Europe. I just go through the images. This is the backyard of my studio. And maybe I can show you here because it's, it's here. Just a view out of my, maybe you see it, <laughs> I don't know. So it's just beside me. Um, And I like to, to, to take pictures beside me because then you start to really go in the details and not to go in the cliches. Here again, I integrated this image. And I, for me, this is one I love also very much because it could be a drawing and also people start to don't uh, know what it is. And it's just in the backyard also somebody was cleaning the, the snow. And if you go in the right corner, you see there's a bicycle and then you feel like, ah, aha, that's it. Yeah. This is uh, how it was presented in the show. So I was more or less one of the younger positions in the 100 years of Leica photography exhibition. And they have a book, five kilo, uh, heavy and it, it was really I was proud to be next to Cartier Bresson and to be one of the younger positions so and I show I wanted to show you the how I framed it because also of course if you do exhibitions the framing is very much important if you make pasta too if you make um, mirrorless or whatever you know that maybe but it's in every case you it's important to think about the framing and the presentation and here for making really the cutting very strong. I didn't do any pasta towing. So I have to watch out for the time. Yeah, I just go through I, because when I was thinking to prepare, I didn't want to show just images I have on my website. So I, I was digging in my things and I have one uh, um, project project I did on my grandpa Herbert. Uh, it's already 10 years old and I just show go through and um, my grandpa my grandfather, he was living in, in Bavaria 10 years ago. Um, he was still alive, now he, he's dead. But my grandma, she, she, she was suddenly ill. So I went down to help him for some weeks and I was taking pictures of him. We were going, he, 33 he was at that time. So I went with him to the hospital to see my grandma. I went for walks. And I loved a lot this silhouette of, him, of this guy because he was like an old man and you can feel that he's getting older. So I took these images and um, then I, but somehow I felt no, that's not giving a real series. And I was working and I said, no, sometimes if you're not satisfied, you have to go on. So I, I felt, okay, maybe I'm cutting off the, 
the um, silhouettes. And uh, here we go. So I started to create a new series with these images because um, I felt somehow I, I was printing them on several layers. And then in total, um, it was pretty much more so on the left hand, you can see that I was uh, putting it on the wall one uh, after another. And on the right hand, you can see it from the front. So I felt it, uh, it in that way I, that uh, I really was much more closer to this, what I wanted to express that an old person is evading, going away slowly, uh, but it's filled with life and filled with several layers. So I was in the end much more um, closer to what I wanted to show. And here you can see some of them, the silhouette of an old man who is uh, somehow um, full with life, but maybe on the end of the life. And so it's a kind, it's a, it, for me, it was touching to do this uh, series. And I, I show it here because I want to motivate myself to work on it. Um, to rework on it and to, I, you see, I, I put it here on the wall because I, I always was thought to continue it because he died one year after and I have much more material and I think it's worth to maybe go on with it. And so that's, I took the, today's appointment for a pretext to go on with that. And here I come to my last um, uh, series. I did in pandemic times, I think. Do we have time still? Yeah, I think I have. Um, I call it, so pandemic times for all of us was uh, a very crazy time. And I was dreaming a lot already before. I was always dreaming a lot in my life. And um, in pandemic, in the first lockdown, I, I was even more dreaming. So real dreams in the night, <laughs> not daydreams. And I started to write down my dreams. And sometimes for me, dreams are really interesting because they are such a source of inspiration and you have so crazy, funny things and absurdities uh, that I try to find um, because sometimes photography has also this aspect of, of absurdity of life. And I try to find pairs to my um, dreams. So I start to uh, read you just five of my dreams and uh, I, I tried to find correspondent correspondences in my imagery, which sometimes I took, but sometimes I had it in my archive. And I didn't want to do an illustration directly, but I want to sometimes to have, create the same feeling. So I read you the um, dream here to this image. I'm dreaming my head off. Tonight in my dream, I was present at the birth of a calf, which for a short time was a cult. Interestingly, I didn't come, it didn't come out of the cow, but disappeared inside her. In the end, it lay exhausted on the ground and was licked by a horse. How changeable things are in dreams. Why do I always dream of my original family? Not a night goes by without one of the members of my large family from young to old appearing. Today, I dreamt of grandpa Walther. So the other one, not Herbert, Walther. We visited him in his home. He was laying in bed with his computer and chatting diligently. I had to smile because he was about 100 years old. I dreamt about a psychopath tonight and he was my boyfriend, all of people. He looked astonishingly similar like Joker. I was in the deepest inner distress because I didn't know how to get rid of him for the best. It was simply terrible because I was afraid he would kill me. After all, it was at least making, I was at least making escape plans. In this dream, I was somehow doing yoga. The lineup was in rows. I stayed at the very back in the last row and hoped that no one would noticed, notice that I was actually naked. I was not completely relaxed. After all, I lined up I could have skipped the class. I was living in a new apartment right under the roof. Looking over the roofs made me feel a little like Paris. Strangely, my apartment had a different entrance and exit. 
which I hadn't noticed for a long time. Often I was confused because I lost orientation in, in the apartment. When I finally understood it, I had to laugh and jumped relieved over the exit onto the grayish glittering roofs. So I could go on with that because I'm, uh, I'm still dreaming a lot and I'm still writing down, but um, now I think I'm coming to an end. And uh, I love uh, that what I really like in the pandemic times that I also like, I have the time to write things and I start to realize I like also writing. So the pandemic times is good for digging in archives, for writing and maybe to open up for new things with your photography. And if you want to see more of my projects, I just could show you a few. I have, of course, more which are not related to street photography, but uh, recently relaunched and I have Insta and Facebook and that's it. Um, thank okay, you. so I will be share. Julia. Thank you very much. Okay, oh, wait, wait. we have uh, a few minutes left for questions. Julia, Dean, do you want me to read them out or would you like to read them out? Uh, you read them out, dear. Okay. Our I like one. hearing your Australian voice. We're a real international crowd today, aren't we? Yes, we are. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, Julia, Eleanor has a question now. Oh. You <laughs> a, a bathing series from Japan and and um, in Hungary. Um, what other bathing cultures would you like to to photograph? Any other countries or that you would like to explore in terms of body of work about water? Yeah, I think I would love to go to India to people bathing in the Ganges and whatever. That uh, could be really uh, still missing. And sometimes I felt also now. Um, that I could continue, because these are all very positive stories on bathing and water, but there are also very difficult aspects on water. So maybe in the second half of my life, I could also go to, to the critical aspects of, because we will have some uh, wars about water. So water is, in mo my opinion, it's very nice for relaxation, but we have also water problems. So maybe if I have uh, the courage, I could go on also in uh, um, seeing these aspects. But okay, India would be for uh, the, the positive aspect, I think. Okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. We have another question. Your books, Water Matters and Scent, are no longer available or, or sold out. Any plans to reissue or reprint them? Um, I, have, I have some of them because, uh, uh, as I told you, maybe, uh, no, uh, the publisher died two years ago. So it's really getting hard. So the Water Matters so, sold out, but Cento, I still have them. I, I was buying them back from the printing house from the brother and uh, so if you ever want to have them you can write me an email and you can I can send it out. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. So contact. I, I, yeah. I have a third book if you're interested on the orchestra so if you're interested in um, in uh, classical music or unusual orchestra, orchestra images you can have this book too or you have a look on my website you'll find it the Intune uh, it's called Intune. Okay so the best way to purchase one of your books is to contact you via your mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. yeah yeah no, no Ron has a question do you always leave the horizon as shot not leveling it? Sorry but again it's uh do you always leave the horizon as shot not leveling it? Yeah and I realized that I, it's always it's always not uh, straight. It's always a little bit like this. <laughs> it's, I don't know why, but it's maybe because I'm left-handed, so it's more like I'm. I don't know. Okay. No, I'm not leveling it. In that point, I'm not really. Mm, I I I really don't crop so much afterwards, and I don't. I like I don't like it if if pictures are too perfect. So maybe that's why I do it extra and uh, unconsciousness. <laughs> Because I don't like if pictures are too, I told you that if it's too, too uh, static or too, um, I somehow I don't, I feel don't feel comfortable with it. Good, good. All right. And Joshua Stern says, I love how you juxtapose perspective, distort size. Can you elaborate on how you see, approach, and are drawn to capturing images in that manner? I like also the, I think I always have the, the, the wish to, if I am somewhere, to go somewhere on top because it, it allows you at first to get an overview and then suddenly also you see, oh wow, from above, it's always nice because it's somehow 
uh, making a, um, the scenery like um, you can see it in a different way. So it's I can just recommend to to look for things where you can climb up and you <laughs> or uh, to or I go also on the diving board on the, I go on top. And of course I have some picture from above, but of course I'm climbing up. And so I really, you, I kind of just encourage to, to move a lot and to, to go around and to, to before you shoot, uh, to go, yeah, or go just climb up or ring somewhere and ask. I did also sometimes that I was ringing somewhere. Can I go, you have a nice balcony. Can I have a look from there? And if you ask nicely, people will allow it to you. So I can just, uh, that's, I would recommend this. I don't know if I if it's um, the question if it's satisfying awesome. or wrong. Okay, and then uh, Ulrich yeah. asks any exciting shoots coming up. Um, yeah, I have a shoot now this this week with it, which is uh, for uh, the ministry here, a ministry of family here. So it's a it's a, a planned shoot. It's an assignment. And then on, on Sunday, I will go to Bremen to see the orchestra I work for. So that's after one year now, they start to record uh, CDs. And I really, because with the orchestra, I go normally on tour around the world. Uh, they didn't play for one year and just a small concert last year in Bremen. But the, now they're recording Haydn. So I'm really excited to go there on, um, on um, Sunday for the first time after a long time now. Yeah. And then, yeah, I don't know, for, I don't have so many plans because in the pandemic, you learn that you don't make so long-term plans. <laughs> so I know what I'm doing the next two weeks, but then um, hopefully it's getting better and I'm, I will be able to, 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 to travel more. Mm. Excellent. Does anyone else have any questions? Feel free to pipe up or you can write them in the chat. Anyone else? I have one question also. Take it away, yes. <laughs> now, how is it in LA? So uh, is it worth going there for taking pictures in the, in the, in the, in the beach or is it just, uh, how are people there? Is it just, uh, are they used to it or is it, for the moment it's quite empty or how is it? It's not strictly? empty, it's very it's crowded. Empty. It's very, very crowded. crowded. Yes, and um, um, as uh, uh, so is everywhere, downtown and Hollywood Boulevard, and as of two weeks ago, I mean, it's it's, it's been working up. There's been crowded times a lot, even during the pandemic, but not mm -hmm. recently. So, but now it's really crowded. So, mm -hmm. but it, but you can take pictures anywhere in LA without too much worry. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've taken pictures of cops arresting people five times now, and even the cops don't say anything to me. Mm -hmm. So, so I think they've been advised well, or maybe uh, th that they, you know, they have to let us take pictures of what they're doing as long as we don't get in their way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's 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 so far so good. Street shooting in LA, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. downtown. Okay. Um, well, any on questions? that note, um, any any other questions? Any last questions? Speak now. All right. On that note, I want to say thank you so much, Julia. Um, round of applause. Julia Dean, do you have any final thoughts or want to say anything? Um, no, I just want to say thank you so much, Julia. Um, there were uh, two other people, other speakers here. I pointed out Eleanor. Uh, Melissa is here too. Melissa, wave your hand. Uh, both of them were yesterday. Now, all of you folks, if you missed something yesterday um, because of time zone or whatever, we're recording everything. So what you'll need to do is uh, write us um, you can write info at lacphoto.org, but tell us specifically what you want the recorded, um, the recorded thing of. Janice, why don't you speak? Because you know about this better. What we're going to do, we're going to put this on our YouTube channel. So um, over the next couple of days, I'm going to be editing them and uploading them. So definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll get the notifications when that uh, video is uploaded. Um, before everyone does leave, I do want to mention we have Street Week events happening all this week. Uh, webinar this Saturday is Street Photography Past, Present and Future uh, with Nick Turpin. And then after that, Julia Dean is going to be presenting the history of street photography. So for the full schedule, once again, I'm putting that in the chat. Do come along. Bink. There we go. 
One last thing to say, um, uh, folks, uh, if you can, what I would really, I, of course, I'd love to have you come to my history of street photography lecture, uh, but I would also really love to have you come to the um, uh, lecture I'm doing at four o'clock on Saturday. It's a documentary project that I've been working on for seven years about a community of homeless people in the alleys of downtown, in one alley in downtown Los Angeles. It's uh, particularly about this man, uh, undocumented immigrant uh, named Jose Hernandez, and it's it's, a, it's probably the most meaningful story I've ever done in my life. So I would just love it if you guys would come. Even if you've already seen some of this work, it's new all the time because I go there a lot. So, um, you know, when everybody else was supposed to be staying home, I was going to the alley, in the, you know, during the pandemic. But um, luckily, I'm uh, well. So um, I, I got some good pictures and, um, and a good story to tell you about Jose. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Happy yeah. Monday, everybody. Have Thank a you, Julia. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for everything. Thank you for showing up and have a nice, a great week.